Here I am at the hearth of my host, Yangvar, the generous, who grants gold to heroic men. Free-handed fosterer, you'll find no three-year-old babe amongst bards more brilliant than me. We often see Vikings portrayed as these bloodthirsty killing machines who butcher, rape and pillage as they see fit. But what if I told you that not all Vikings spent their every waking moment with an axe in hand, searching for another neck to slash? Well, if we consider Egil Skelligrimson, we do indeed have a Viking who was peaceful, pleasant, and even poetic. The poem I read earlier may have sounded like it was penned by some aristocratic bard, but it was actually composed by Egil Skelligrimson at the mere age of three years old. Egil Skelligrimson was said to have been born in the early 9th century in the year 904, and would live for nearly 100 years, having died in the year 995. Most of what we know comes from Egil Saga, where he is the protagonist of his story. So like with most Vikings, whether he existed or not, is up to you. Egil was born in Iceland, and would show early signs of finding the pen mightier than the sword. As I mentioned earlier, he penned his first poem when he was just three years old, after defying his father and attending a feast hosted by his grandfather, Yangvar the Generous. Supposedly, his father told him that he couldn't go, because it was hard enough to keep him well behaved when he was sober, but when he'd been drinking, he would be an uncontrollable menace. Yes, a three-year-old getting drunk. Egil was said to steal a horse and ride to the feast behind his father's back. Again, yes, a three-year-old. His father was right to be concerned though, because Egil would show signs of berserk behaviour, sometimes even fits of rage that would seemingly come and go. Along with the description of his large and ugly head, many have theorised that Egil suffered from Paget's disease, a disease which causes the thickening of bones, resulting in pain that may have set him off as a child. As I mentioned, Egil was something of a peaceful boy, writing poems, and sure he had the odd violent outburst, but what child hasn't? Of course what separates him from other children is that at the age of seven, he would find himself cheated in a game with a few other boys. Now if you're anything like me, you'd have probably just let it go, right? But Egil went home and found himself an axe. He then returned to the boys who had cheated him and split their skulls down to their jaw. Much later in his life, Egil would find himself in an argument with Battle of Atli, a retainer of King Eric Bloodaxe and also a kinsman of Queen Gunhild. Egil with all his charming manners would kill Bador of Atli, and thus would spark vengeance in both Eric Bloodaxe and Queen Gunhild. In fact, Queen Gunhild would even send her own brothers to assassinate Egil, but when they tried, Egil killed them both too. Egil and his brother would flee to the east, and would begin pillaging and raiding lands to win much wealth and honour. They would spend half a year here, living in peace. It was that same year however, that Harold Fairhair, the King of Norway, died. Eric Bloodex would go on to murder his own brothers in order to secure his place as the next king. Once he achieved this, he declared Egil an outlaw and an enemy of the land. Men were sent after Egil, but he was able to slay them, including the son of Eric and Queen Gunhild, who tried to apprehend Egil, only to receive an axe to the face. Egil then cursed the king and queen, and set off on his horse. Queen Gunhild was said to however put a spell on Egil, making him feel restless and depressed. As chance would have it, Eric and Gunhild would end up as the king and queen of Northumbria, rivalling against King Athelstan of England. It's during this time that Egil was said to have been shipwrecked in Northumbria of all places, and soon learned who it was who ruled the land. Knowing that he would not be welcome and likely hunted, Egil sought out a good friend named Aaron Bourne, who offered him refuge. Aaron Bourne advised Egil to go to the king and embrace his foot and seek forgiveness. Egil agreed, albeit unwillingly, but what choice did he have? Aaron Bourne accompanied Egil to the throne, where he bent the knee and attempted to seek forgiveness. But King Eric Bloodax was not moved by his attempt and said that the wrongs he had committed were too great. Queen Gunhild called for an immediate execution, but Aaronborn managed to convince the king to wait until morning. Aaronborn gave one last piece of advice to Egil, stating that he should compose a poem and stay up all night to ensure that it was in praise of his enemy and entirely heartfelt. Egil conceded 
and pen the best poem he could come up with. In the morning, he stood before both the king and queen, and recited a twenty stanza long poem which appears in Egil's saga. The poem was so complex and flattering that it took Eric Bloodaxe by surprise, so much so that he granted Egil his life back. It wasn't the only compelling poem written by Egil either. Later on, Egil's son would die, and Egil would retreat to his room, refusing to come out as he battled with grief. He would write a poem during this time, known as Loss of Sons, or otherwise known as Revenge Denied. In the poem, Egil would go on to blame the god Odin for taking his son, and while he recognises that Odin has blessed him with the gift of poetry, he can't help himself but feel resentment. In this poem, he is known to have said, Forgive his fate, and forget I will not. Odin not Egil, enjoys him forever. He has stolen my son, the sapling growth. From my wife's womb, the warrior seed. The spear God shared spoils with me. My oath was to Odin, he gave me aid. Now that maker of mystic, runes only mocks me, voids all my victories, that breaker of vows. Egil was later known for fighting in the service of King Athelstan, where he had received generous payments of silver. However, in the end, he would retire to a peaceful life, where he returned to his family in Iceland. He would live into his 80s quite comfortably, what with the riches he had amassed, but instead of leaving his riches to his family, he would employ a servant to accompany him and assist him in the burying of all of his treasures. Unfortunately for the servant, Egil would kill him as well and bury him along with the treasure, so that no one would ever know of its location. But was Egil even real? It's hard to imagine any three-year-old composing such writings, let alone articulating such intricate thoughts. I know as a three-year-old, I was merely drawing shapes on the wall with a crayon, but riding a horse and getting drunk? I'm still yet to do one of those things. While he does appear before Eric Bloodaxe and Queen Gunhild throughout his life, the activities of these two figures have also been widely disputed in history, given that a lot of what we know has been taken from the sagas. But let me know what you thought about Egil Skallagrimsson, and whether you thought he was real. As always guys, don't forget to like this video and hit the subscribe button. You can also catch one of my videos that will be appearing over on Mythology and Fiction's channel over the next few days. Until then, see you in the next Viking video, where we'll most likely be talking about a man who earned the nickname The Walker, because no horse was strong enough to carry him. Until the next time guys.